So we're going to start the seafront walk from here. That's why I love being on the south coast. Obviously the English Channel, the water quality is really beautiful. So the fort here on my right hand side, built back in 1887, the Redoubt Fortress is just one of four of these uh, still standing in the UK. It's quite overgrown. There's another one of these actually in Felixstowe called Langard Fort. As you can see, the moat literally goes all the way around, but it's never actually been filled with water. But um, it's a shame it's currently closed today because it really is um, a great day out. Um, in the distance, you can see probably one of the most beautiful piers in the UK. So again, when the tide goes out, you've got a little bit more sand here. But other than that, of course, it's a, it's a shingle beach. But I like the way that they uh, here in Eastbourne have painted the railings all blue. In Brighton, there is it green? And they always seem to be either a blue or a green, don't they? gorgeous day as I said you know you're in Eastbourne when you've got uh, blue railings blue seats blue posts everywhere and some very nice hotels along the seafront and something you'll see a lot of in Eastbourne is palm trees especially when we get to the other side of the pier I'll show you what I mean people there having breakfast it's actually just after 11 but you know, it's summer. If you're staying over in a hotel, why not? Looks like it's going to be another warm day. So in regards to seafront attractions, Eastbourne doesn't have too many. To be honest, it's very quaint. It's lovely and quiet. The major focus obviously is on the pier and the, uh, the 19th century bandstand, which we're going to come to a little bit later on. As I said, being one of the sunniest places in the UK, does it need much else? When the sun shines, it's just lovely just to go for a walk. There's some Art Deco stuff here on the beach. That's a bit random. And this even more so. It's an actual shower, which is quite nice because um, you don't see many showers on the beaches in the UK, which um, let's face it, you go abroad in the summer and the first thing you find is a shower to get rid of the, uh, the sand or the salt. So I think more seaside places in the UK need showers just on the beach. Lots of lovely pretty hotels though. And talking of pretty hotels, there is one hotel that I have to show you. It's called The Grand and it is so beautiful. It's going to be coming up here just on the right hand side after the bandstand. But first we're going to go and have a look at what is the jewel in the crown here in Eastbourne, which I guess why Eastbourne is famous for its beautiful pier. So let's go and check it out. I mean, I'm just talking about how many palm trees you'll see here in Eastbourne. I mean, like it's almost like being abroad. Now, it used to be dubbed as Europe's number one pier. And like I say, it's definitely the most beautiful. Which way do we go, left or right? I think we'll take the right way. <laughs> Look at those hippos. So you see bits of what looks like gold everywhere on the pier. It's obviously maybe brass, I don't know. Just look at the colour of the water. Now, as tea rooms go, I haven't seen many tea rooms with chandeliers in them. Look at this, how incredible. So how much is a cup of tea? Three pound, there's some herbal tea as well. 
They do some wonderful cream teas in here and sandwiches. Such a beautiful little place. So the amusements actually on the pier are hidden quite subtly, which I think is quite nice and classy. They're just over here on the left hand side. So obviously you can't go and walk up there, which is a bit of a shame because that looks um, really cute, isn't it? Please let me know in the comments. Obviously it's not real gold, but is it brass or gold painted? Just over there you can see the edge of the South Downs and the famous very tall chalky cliffs and beachy head. It's like stuck in a time warp isn't it Eastbourne Pier? Obviously they're doing a lot of restoration at the moment. See bits of the gold. I'm just being nosy but they're doing a lot of work. I'm not quite sure what this used to be, let me know in the comments. Was it maybe a theatre? I don't know, must have been maybe. This is called the Victoria Suite. What's inside here? It's like a meeting room. Now, if you like fishing, you can come to the end of the pier. And come down here. me, that always freaks me out. But down here you get a really great view of underneath the pier. Obviously I'm going to do that in just a, a moment, but from this side, all really rusty. And look at that, there's even like walkways down the centre of the pier. Amazing. Just look how rusty it is. The water looks so inviting today. Oh my God. Can you see that there? That is like the biggest crab I have ever seen in the UK. So let's face it, as piers go, Eastbourne Pier is definitely one of my favorites and also the most classiest, but as you know, I always like to go and have a look under the pier, so let's go and do that. Right, let's go and check out underneath the pier. Obviously you can get some great photos at sunset underneath this pier. Look at that. I always find it fascinating looking at the underneath bits of the pier, how much extra wood is used that you don't see. And always, graffiti. Most piers I've been under, there's always graffiti right at the back end. So continuing from the pier, and walking down towards the bandstand, we have the very pretty seafront gardens which obviously in the middle of summer looks so good. Yeah. And when I was talking about palm trees down here in Eastbourne, there is a plenty. Let's look at them. And they do grow very well down here for obvious reasons, being the warmest part of the country and the sunniest. It does help. I love these lights, look. It's a whole cluster of them. For seaside lights, though, these do hang down quite low. I'm surprised more people don't try and pull at them. But the buildings on the seafront here are very impressive. They have the classic Eastbourne look that I would say with the balconies and the overhang and those kind of slits in the top.
And I don't know about you, but this is something I've just picked up on going around the coastlines. You don't see too many flags. Eastbourne proudly waving the great British flag. Pretty humongous one at that as well. So coming up here on my left is Eastbourne Bandstand, which is actually used quite regularly, unlike most bandstands in the country that are really not used anymore. This is still used for uh, open air shows and concerts. That is one way to clean the chairs. <laughs> He's jet washing the chairs. Just look at the size of these palm trees here on the seafront. They're pretty thick. It's almost like um, the palm tree forest that I saw in Greece. To see them all lined up. We've got some uh, massive aloe vera plants doing the rounds as well. And just behind all the palm trees, you've got Eastbourne's big wheel. Some call it the Eastbourne Eye. A little bit bigger than the one in Hastings. Not as big as the one in Great Yarmouth. Now this part of the seafront is definitely one of my favourites and also the classiest. Just over here is the Grand Hotel which is painted in pure white and with the sun on it today it is totally beautiful. Let's go and check it out. Just look how beautiful this hotel is. There's even a butler and concierge here. And it's nice that they've actually put out a place for me so just walking through this archway off the seafront, we come to an amazing site, which is a Martello Tower here in Eastbourne, and it's called the Wish Tower, which was built to kind of save Eastbourne from Napoleon when he declared that he wanted to take over. And you normally can actually have a walk around this. It's amazing how many Martello Towers in the UK are now residential homes it's crazy isn't it there's been quite a lot of erosion as well on the cliffs here on the south downs the lighthouse over there which you can see in the distance a good 15 20 years ago it was moved back from the cliff otherwise it would have uh, fallen into the english channel and it was quite an amazing it's absolutely stunning you can probably see all the way towards Dover and Brighton maybe and uh, you can't today but on a good day sometimes you can actually see France so those that are scared of heights look away now and I don't believe anybody lives in it all year round but in low tide you could, in theory, even though it's classed as trespassing, actually walk up those steps. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and make sure you click that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video or when I go live. If you want to follow me on social media, all the links are in the description and on the screen now. And I'll see you next time.